Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly. This is my space to talk about everything that I am currently making and working on. Most of the time it is knitting. Sometimes we have some sewing and some other things in there as well. It has been a little while since I spoke to you all last and did a proper podcast style episode. So we have a lot to go through today. Before I get started, I'll just do a little introduction of who I am for any new subscribers here. I am coming to you from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where I live with my partner. I do a lot of sewing and knitting and always trying to keep my hand bu hands busy. I am also doing a lot of natural dye lately and it's been a really, really fun experiment. I um, just kind of dedicated my life the last couple years or so, especially the last year, to creating and making things. So I'm just trying to share that all with you. So today we'll start with the finished objects first. I've got two sweaters and a pair of mittens, and then we'll go through some of the whips. I've got a few acquisitions to share with you all, and I've got some sewing to share with you, just one well, actually, no, I've got a finished sewing item and then some sewing plans. I'll keep that towards the end of the video in case you came here for the knitting. And then I also want to share some um, naturally dyed yarn that I've been working on. So let's start with the finished objects. So I recently did a Everything I Knit in 2023 video and these were featured in there but I didn't talk about them much so I thought I would just quickly talk about them here in case you didn't see that video. And these are the World's Simplest Mittens by Tin Can Knits. These are my first pair of mittens. I always wanted to knit a pair but I just never got around to it. So I really, really love these. These are made from Noro. Where's the, I have the yarn bin. So it's Silk Garden Solo. And the color is 86 and it's made with 45% silk, 45% mohair and 10% wool and so this is a 50 gram ball that I had that was kindly gifted to me from Knitting Fever so thank you Knitting Fever and I got a pair of mittens out of them. I have the tiniest bit of yarn left. I still actually have to weave in the ends here but I've, I've been wearing them. Uh, the what else oh yes so I cast it on for the children's size and then did the length for the adults or just until it was good for my hands um, because I was worried about running out of yarn being that I only had a 50 gram ball but it turned out just fine. They are on the narrow side being that it's a uh, children's width <laughs> but I like it. It's a good fit for my hands. So I wear these a lot. This yarn keeps me very very warm. My next finished object I was actually wearing in my last video, but I haven't talked about it in a podcast style episode, so I'll quickly talk about it now. This is the Front Porch Pullover by Andrea Gone Knits. I did this as a test knit, and it is a drop shoulder constructed from the um, top down. Got twisted rib for the neck and the cuffs, and a tubular bind off. So this is called for DK weight yarn for specifically for a fingering weight held with a mohair. So for the fingering weight, I did Drops Flora in the color Misty Forest. And then the mohair was this here, which is Handmade in Fine Yarn, Super Kids Silk Mohair, and in the color Stardust. So I used just about a full skein for this sweater here and I have another one left. But you can see that this is quite blue on its own and then combined with the Drops Flora Misty Forest, which was more of a green, it kind of made this really pretty teal. So I've had this done for probably a, about a month now and I've worn it a ton. It is a perfect staple piece for my wardrobe. I really love it. It feels amazing. 
it keeps me really warm. The fit is also perfect on me. So if you're looking for like a staple piece that has um, DK weight yarn or you're looking up to looking to use up some mohair and some fingering weight and you need like a simple drop shoulder, I highly recommend this one. My next one I haven't shown at all. I told some of you if you've seen my latest podcast episode, which was a while ago now, probably in November, I told some of you that I would be test knitting for Coco Amore Knitwear, which is Cheryl Mokatari, I believe, hopefully I pronounced that right. And she was designed the Audrey jacket. So that was a test and I just finished it. The pattern is not out yet. Oh, and by the way, the pattern for the front porch pullover is now out. And everything that I talk about today will be linked down below in the description box. It'll be linked to my project pages on Ravelry. Forgot to say that, I always do. So this is the Audrey jacket. Like I said, this isn't released yet, so it won't be linked down below, but it will be released fairly soon. Uh, the test deadline is over. I know she's just kind of making some final changes or finishing touches to the pattern. So be on the lookout for that. This is just an amazing jacket. So first of all, the yarn was provided by Gepard Yarn. Um, it is the Teddy Deer in the boucle and I did the light beige color. And I chose some ceramic buttons that I purchased on Etsy. I just love the ceramic buttons on here. I accidentally did four buttons instead of five. I don't, I don't know how that worked out, but anyways, it worked, it's fine. And the fit is perfect. I did the second size. It grew a lot in blocking. So when I first finished it prior to blocking, it was probably here like right at my waist and then I got quite a bit of length. So this jacket is knit top down. It is in stockinette so you do have to do purling on the wrong side but it's not too bad. The thing is this is a bigger gauge because the yarn is, is um, quite thick but I found that it actually slipped me down quite a bit. This is my first time knitting with boucle yarn and I just wasn't used to all the loops and that really slowed me down. So even though it's a bigger gauge, I didn't feel like that sped up my process at all. And it like, I'm not, I don't really enjoy working with boucle yarn I've discovered. So this was more of a product knit for me, but I was so excited to have it that it was, it was definitely doable to get through. And once getting to the sleeves, it was really nice because it was just all stockinette. And the finishings here, it's an I-cord for the neck. It's a double knit button band, I-cord for the bottom and I-cord for the sleeves. So I really love it. It's so cozy and squishy. This yarn is amazing. I know some of the other testers, there's some in black, some in pink. Um, that's all I know. <laughs> and quite a few in the light beige that I did here. But already, I mean, I've only been done this for about a week and I've gotten so much wear out of it already. So um, yeah, be on the lookout for this. Coco Amore Knitwear, she'll be releasing this fairly soon. Right, that's it for finished objects as far as knitwear goes. I have quite a few whips to update you all on. So we'll start with the weekend hat that I'm knitting for my boyfriend. I've shown this before, but it was a long time ago and I barely had any progress. So the weekend hat is by Petite Knit and it is a double folded brim, one by one rib. So it calls for DK weight yarn. So I'm using my own naturally, ha naturally hand dyed yarn and I'm doing two colors of fingering weight. So this is dyed with kutch, 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 and this is sequoia. So this is like a slightly purple gray and then this nice cinnamon toffee color brown. And I'm doing it for a very slight marl. 
So if you haven't knit this pattern before, it is double folded. So it's an extremely long hat. So here is the first fold. And then I'm just working the second fold. And then after that, I'll be doing the decreases. So this will fold over once again, one more time so that the cast on edge is hidden. But I'm loving this. From far away, it kind of gives it a nice brown, but you do see little specks of that purpley gray in there. I think it looks really cool. I am a fan of a low contrast marl. I think it's really unique and pretty. So I'm excited about this. This has been a good project to watch TV too. It's just knit and purl, knit and purl, knit and purl. Every few, you do have different sections of double knitting. You can kind of see the indent here and the indent here. And that is just so that it is able to easily fold in on itself for the, for the brim. So it's kind of nice to have those because you have markers as to how far you're going in the pattern and kind of gauge how much more you have left. So this is coming up well. I, God, I think I hadn't worked on this for ages. I think the last time I was probably about here and then the last day or two days, I think I've done from here up while working on other things too. And it's just been flying by. And then I thought to myself, why haven't I been working on this? I promised this to him in November, I think. <laughs> oh, well. It will be done soon and I really love it. I think the color is really cool. And this is what it's looking like so far on. And this is just the single fold. So again, it'll be folded again. It'll have lots of thickness and warmth. And yeah, I'm doing size, the largest size because I'm a tight knitter. And um, yeah. <laughs> I just realized I forgot one more finished object. <laughs> so this is one I finished just yesterday and this is the Opal Sock Yarn Bunny by Susan B. Anderson. And here it is. <laughs> I knit this for my niece's birthday, which is today. We're going to a birthday party this afternoon. She's turning two. So um, yeah, <laughs> this is the little bunny. I knit it with Yarn Ink Sock Yarn in the color Jawbreaker. And it's so, so cute. As you can see, it's got like a, the cutest little pom-pom tail. It's just really sweet. So I started this, I looked on my Ravelry. I started July 1st and I just finished yesterday. So I cast it on July, cast on July 1st. And then I, it was just really fiddly. Like I don't really like working with double pointed needles on like a small little <laughs> objects. And that was basically all of this. But once I got going and I picked it back up last week, it flew by. So I think in July, when I first cast this on, I got the head, basically the head done. And then I put it away for months and months and months, didn't touch it. And then just last week and I picked it back up and finished it. So it's not too bad. Once you get going, it's easy and it's really fun. And it's, it, it starts to like you build up the bunny pretty quickly. So it's exciting to see it grow in front of you. So I'll be giving this to her this afternoon. And I can't wait to see how she reacts. My other whip is a ad, is an advent project. So this is the anthology throw by Helen Stewart and I have an advent from um, Big Little Yarn Co. And I haven't worked on this since like mid-December because I had test knits that I had to finish and some gift knits and all that. And yeah, I just haven't worked on it. But um, it's hard to show because it is a circular blanket and I've got it on, it's just a pouch now. <laughs> I don't have big enough circulars for to show it properly, but I think I want all of your advice on this. If you could let me know if you have an opinion on this. I'm not loving the center of this blanket at all. So like I went in order of the days of the yarn. So this was day one and then day two. After day two, it really like mellowed out. There's less striping and I really love the look of the days after day two. But just with 
this pattern being that it's circular it's creating like very a lot of stripes and i've seen this advent in garter start like in garter shawls like similar to a sophie shawls like those kind of patterns and it looks really good with this yarn in the front and it's not stripy so um anyways I, I just don't think i have the best pattern for this colorway for like my preference so like what do you all think about that so overall it'll be a big circle a blanket and i have opened up all the colors and i think a lot of them will be more mellow like this but i'm just not loving this stripy middle i was wondering is it has any of you have any of you done this before or think it's possible where you could do like a there's sweater surgery do you think i could do blanket surgery <laughs> do you think i could take out up to whatever row this is like follow the pattern put in a lifeline on the third day here and then just replace these colors with something less stripy do you think that's possible and do you think i should try it or do you think that's just way too risky? I'm not sure. And I'm even contemplating, if I don't want to do that, I'm contemplating ripping out and doing more of a shawl pattern. And like I've seen other people with this, with this advent, because it just looks, it looks really good. So I'd love to know your thoughts on that. I wish I could, I wish I could sh properly show you this, but I think you get the point what I'm working with here in the middle. So I'd love to know your thoughts on that. If you think it looks fine, if you think overall it won't be that big of a deal, or if it's worth doing some surgery on it or ripping back if I'm not, if I'm not happy with it. Okay, next we've got quite a few socks to get through. <laughs> so I'll start with this one. This is, I finally got sock blockers too. <laughs> this is a, um, this, these are the Tygo socks by Sari Nordland. It is called for DK weight yarn, but I did fingering weight. I just adjusted my needle size and, and it worked out fine. The, a couple other modifications that I did is I did a shorter cuff because the DK weight ones, it's quite a tall cuff that you fold over. So I just did a short cuff and then I also did an afterthought heel instead of the heel like slip stitch heel flap and gusset that's called for. In the pattern, the also, also the cabling goes all the way to the end of the toe and I just did a regular toe. So it's a really fun, easy, simple like ribbing slash cable project. If you haven't done cables before, I think this is a good one to start with. It was actually pretty funny. So I did the afterthought heel, but it was like a not so afterthought heel where I knit to about here. I put the stitches on hold and then I went in and did the heel because I just wanted the heel done. So um, yeah, I'm calling it the not so afterthought heel. <laughs> but the afterthought heel is my favorite heel construction because I just find that it flies by. It goes by so fast because I do it the exact same way that I do the toe. And it just seems like the least fussy way for me to do a heel. <laughs> and I've been loving that kind of construction. And I've just recently been trying to play around with different heel constructions because I do not enjoy the heel flap and gusset. I don't, I find it really annoying and I hate when I get to that point in the sock. So I used um, Queensland Collection yarn in the uh, Tenderfoot base and the color is Venetian Rose. So it's really pretty because you can even see randomly there are bits of blue flecks throughout there. They're just like ever so subtle they are <laughs> in there and um, there's just like a like in person it's kind of hard to show on camera but in person there's a lot of depth to this yarn. There's like it goes between baby pink to corally to a bit of gray and then random blues in there and yeah it's hard to show on on camera but it's a really beautiful beautiful color and this yarn is i think it's 20 percent polyamide and then 80 percent 
merino. So not super wash, uh, just merino. That's one sock. Um, next sock is this one here. This is a pattern of my own. It's kind of hard to tell. If I change the angle a bit like that, you can kind of see the chevron pattern going on there. So it's just a chevron pattern using knits and pearls. I did a shorty sock. I like wearing shorties. <laughs> and I did a short row heel for this and then just like a regular toe. So I love, love, love these socks. <laughs> I really like a look of texture on socks. I think it's just like, it's really fun. It's fun to knit too, kind of just breaks it up. And then also when you get to the foot part, you're doing stock in it on the bottom half. So it's a nice break. It's a nice mixture between having to pay a little bit more attention than zoning out for, <laughs> for one side of the sock. For yarn, this is my own naturally hand dyed yarn. So I, um, I'm really proud of this yarn. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of experimentation when it comes to naturally hand dyeing my yarn and I've been knitting a lot more with it. I really want to knit up a pair of socks and see how they wear and see how the color holds and so far so good. Um, this is this color I'm calling strawberry ice cream. This one is rhubarb. It kind of like looks like Kind of like cooked rhubarb or like baked rhubarb to me <laughs> in a pie so i oh i'm really really proud of these socks just because it's my own design and it's my own hand dyed yarn so yeah i'm very happy i have only made one oh same with the other one by the way these are all just finished like one sock each for each pair is finished so i still have to do the second sock for each sock that i'm showing you today i've just been doing one sock pattern then switching to the other one and then I'm finding that that helps with like my attention span when it comes to knitting socks and then it's like a new sock again when I go back to knit the second one <laughs> and it kind of like just gives me a break and gives some variety. So I think the next one that I'll finish is probably this one because I really want to start wearing them. <laughs> Another sock to share. This one isn't on a blocker because I still have to weave in ends. But <laughs> this is just a plain vanilla sock. And this is, I think I did like 15 rows knit pearl for one by one rib for the cuff. I did a pop of color at the top. I did a short row heel. Again, just trying to play with different heel constructions. I actually really enjoy the short row heel and I enjoy the way it fits my foot a lot as well. And then I just did a regular toe and a contrast for the toe. I just did one stripe of contrast um, before doing the whole toe. I think it's pretty cute. This yarn is also my own hand dyed. <laughs> So this is just like a really fun speckly base that I'm working on. I really love how it knits up. It's um, like, I think it's like cinnamon sprinkly. And this color here I'm calling toffee. And then I think I might call this cinnamon sprinkle. I really love it. <laughs> I think it's a really nice, even speckled. I'm really proud of myself because I think this was my first speckled yarn. And I love naturally speckled yarn because I just find that it's not as common. It's not something that I see a lot. I see a lot of solid naturally hand dyed, not a lot, like more of it, but I never see a lot of speckled. So I love how this turned out. I just love knitting with speckled yarn too because it's just fun to see how it, the pattern turns up. So I, again, I just have one of these and I'll hopefully be making its partner <laughs> in the next little while. This one knit up really fast. Again, it was just like a quick vanilla sock, but the fit of this is absolutely perfect. It's amazing. I love the fit of this. 
and I'm excited to block it too and get its nice shape on the blocker and hopefully I can show you that next time but yeah I've got quite a few pair of fun socks for myself coming up and what's great is I only have two pairs of socks for myself right now that I've knitted and they're DK weight yarn and they were my first two pairs of socks that I ever knit and they're not that great <laughs> there's lots of um Lots of random mistakes in there, which is fine, but I have knitted lots of fingering weight yarn, fingering weight socks for lots of other people. And I'm always kind of like, like I love knitting for other people, but I'm always a little bit sad when I give them away because I really want some fingering weight knit socks for myself. So that's kind of what I've been doing uh, the last little bit, just kind of building up some, some socks for myself. And it's been really enjoyable. I've actually like really surprisingly been enjoying knitting on socks. I, yeah, I've become, become a little bit obsessed with it that I had to, I've had to take, put those away to get work done on some other things that I really want to get done. <laughs> but it's been really enjoy, enjoy, no, that's fine. I've been really enjoying it and that's all that matters. Okay, next up we have the Kutar Beret by Sari Nordlin. I started this, I don't think I've shown this on here yet. So I started this in December, I think. And I haven't, I worked on it for a lot on one weekend and then I kind of put it away because other things came up but I got a good amount done and I'm hoping to finish it fairly soon. This is just the beginning of a Kutar beret. Look how beautiful that is. So I'm using a DK weight yarn. It is hand dyed in LA. The color is honey pie and it's Linera's Alma DK. This is it in the caked up form. And it's just, it's coming off extremely accurate on the camera. I love it. <laughs> I can't wait to have this. I think this will be a really cute beret. I, I used to wear berets and I have this like felt one that I recently gave away to a friend. And uh, it's just a bit too structured for me. I don't like the like really structured berets on myself. So I'm hoping that this one has a little bit more drapiness to it. And I think it will just fit my style a bit more. Let's see. Okay. This one I just started this morning and I am using Saxony yarn from Juniper Moon Farm. And this was kindly gifted to me from Knitting Fever. I was so excited when I saw this. So this is 75% cashmere and 25% extra fine merino wool. The color is Feldgrau. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but the color number is 105. It's a beautiful green with random little Flex of other colors in there. I really wanted a shawl, I think, I decided. <laughs> and I'm kind of just making this up as I go. I'm writing it down as I go and I'm hoping that it works. <laughs> Again, this is just the beginning. Started a couple, like an hour ago or two hours ago. So let's see. It is consisting of an I-court edge. I'm playing around with it a bit. But, God, how can I show this? I need it against white, maybe? Anyway, there are eyelets here, like a V eyelet. And then in the center stitch for the eyelet is a dandelion stitch. It's really hard to show this. I also, my eyes are very sensitive to light and I cannot tell right now. Like my eyesight right now is terrible. I cannot tell right now if it's showing up right. <laughs> Anyways, I'll do more of this 
I'll work more on this and I'll show you next time and show you how it progresses and I might change up the design completely because I don't know if what I chose is the best thing for this type of yarn. I want the dandelion stitch to be noticeable <laughs> and quite defined and I think it kind of just gets hidden in this yarn. But you can kind of see it there and maybe with blocking it'll like puff up a bit more but I'm not sure. So I might be changing those to bobbles. I'm not entirely sure but it's been fun to play around and fun to kind of make up a design as you go. I'm in, in need of a big cozy shawl I think. I haven't knit on a shawl for ages and they're really fun and therapeutic to knit on in my opinion. All right, that's it for whips. So I'm actually doing good on time here. I've got some acquisitions to share. So I'm gonna start with a couple of bags that I forgot and I'm gonna go get them. Okay, we'll start with something that my friend gave me for Christmas. We were in Victoria together a couple months back and I was eyeing up this bag and she took a picture of it and bought it later. And it's this amazing bag here. So I love this color. Oh my God, I'm out of breath. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a beautiful mustard color. It's got this cute tassel and these cranes flying. So I think it's a makeup bag, but I mean, obviously you can use it for a project bag and it's quite large, so probably fit like a shirt, definitely like hats and socks obviously in here, probably a shawl. It's really, really cute. I love this one. And it's a triangle type construction, so it's got a flat bottom. So I love this. I also got this amazing bag for Christmas from Knitting Fever, and it is a Luca bag. And it is the Lyra or Lyra project tote bag. It's quite huge. So I actually used this bag for knitting on my Audrey jacket, the, this one here, as you can see, like it's got a lot to it <laughs> and all of the yarn for it and my whip fit in this bag along with like my notions pouch and everything. I still have some leftover yarn in there. It's got pouches everywhere. It zips up, it's got nice long handles. I brought this with me everywhere during Christmas and the holiday time because I was working on that project and it just fit everything that I needed into one bag. It was amazing. So while we're on the subject of knitting fever, I used, recently got like a mystery fun surprise box at my front door and they sent me a lot of fun beautiful items so I just want to quickly show you that so I shared sorry for the crinkling there we go I shared the Saxony Juniper Moon so I got that and then I also got the Beatrix from Juniper Moon in the color um Jasper it is so soft and it is a bulky weight yarn. It's 54% merino, 30% angora, and 16% nylon. I will be knitting the, um, what's it called? The Gallant Sweater by Kadri. So it's a really super simple top-down raglan with like a mock neck. And it'll be all over in this beautiful burnt orange. also got some of this Gadifra, I think is how it's called or it's pronounced. It is Peruvian wool. It's a bulky weight yarn and it's, um, is there a color on this? Color is just 00557 if you're interested. Look at this and I don't know if you notice, but look at the match of colors here. It's exactly like that dusty blue and light dusty pink. So I got two of these and I'm uh, 
thinking I'm going to make some headbands out of this, like a nice cabled headband, and probably stash them away and gift them for Christmas next year. Hmm. Okay, I really want to show some of the yarn that I've been dyeing. That's not in project form. <laughs> So I have a bunch of midis, minis that I've been dyeing, as well as some full skeins, so I'm gonna grab some full skeins. Okay. Okay. So, here's the mustard color. Really love this one. I've got, this is that strawberry ice cream that was the heel and toe, or the cuff and toe on that last, on those socks that I showed you. Yeah, these are all naturally dyed. I've got this nice beige, I'm calling this um, butterscotch. Here's that toffee color. Got this beautiful green, which I'm calling eucalyptus. And my favorite is this reddish brown that I'm calling mulberry. So these are just some of the colors. I've got a ton of them in here. I've got about I, I so many, <laughs> but I. I'm really loving the combination here. I'll just try and put it together. Look at these colors together. It's like a perfect fall palette. <laughs> I know we're in winter and approaching spring, but I think that's really pretty. I also have some other color combos that I love. Let's do some up. This is really pretty too. All of those sweet shop blankets that are getting made up and the, um, the Stella quilt pillow, I'm kind of tempted. <laughs> Here is a little swatch from the mulberry. And it's up really beautifully. And I'll show you some of the larger skeins that I've been playing around with. I really love this one. Just subtle pinks and little beiges and little purpley gray. Same with this one, just kind of a bit stronger in the pink. I just love these. I've also got this really cool one. These The bigger skeins aren't washed yet. They've been drying and they're twisted up just for storing purposes and I still have to wash them give them their final wash and then skein them up neatly. So they're not as tidy as the minis yet, but you'll get an idea. I really like this one too. I think this would make a pretty sock or a nice hat. Ooh. I got this cool gray. I don't even know how that happened, honestly. <laughs> I... And this really cool rust. Really love this one. I've got this one here, this colorway I'm calling Andrew's socks because Andrew is my boyfriend. They match a pair of socks that I made him. And I didn't even mean for this to happen, but the colorway is like similar colors to a pair of socks that he wears all the time that I made him. And yeah, I was like, I should call these Andrew or something. 
and he's like, color manager sucks. So <laughs> I really love this one. It's kind of like, it's kind of Christmassy, but not in an obnoxious way, <laughs> not in like your bright green, bright red. It's kind of a more subtle Christmas color. So I might save these to knit up for Christmas during December next year. I, th I think this is really beautiful. This one here is fun. This too is an accident. It's a dark, dark green with little bits, bits of speckling of like a dark purpley burgundy color. I've got a couple skeins of just like a nice blush pink. I've got a lot of yarn. <laughs> that I'm dying and it's just, it's piling up, but it's really fun to experiment with. And I'm working on just getting consistency throughout the dye pots and yeah, it's fun. Here's a big skein of that strawberry ice cream. Really fun color. I got a couple skeins of the eucalyptus here in the the large skeins, the 100 grams. These are all fingering weight, by the way. 80% or 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And I got this cool taupe color too, which I think would be a really nice. It's like a really, oh, I like this actually. At first I didn't, but now that it's fully dried and I'm seeing it in sunlight, I think it would be a really nice just like basic sock with some texture on it, like a really simple texture. It'd be a good everyday sock since it's a nice neutral color. I dyed up this skein here for my friend. Same friend that gave me that tote bag. She's been getting into knitting and She's going to try her first pair of socks soon, so I dyed this up for her. And hmm. here's a big skein of the mustard. So I think that's all the yarn I'll show for you today. <laughs> um, I'd love to know maybe if you like really liked some of the colors. I'd love to know. It's been really fun. I plan on dyeing a lot more and it's just been um, really fun to experiment. So I have been using some dye that I've collected myself from my mom's flower farm. I have a lot of access to dried flowers and dried plants so I use some of that and then some natural dye that I've purchased as well. It's a combo and variety of all those things and I'm just mixing different colors together, seeing what comes out. I'm writing everything down and keeping track in case I want to make that color again. And I'm using iron as modifying and like to satin any colors. And it's just been such a fun experiment. I've been really enjoying it. <laughs> so it's been fun to show all of you too. Okay, let's move on to knitting or to sewing. <laughs> uh, I've got, I'm done talking about the knitting and yarn and all that. So we'll move on to knitting. Oh my God, we'll move on to sewing. I recently finished the Romy Gather Dress by Sew House 7. I'll put up pictures of myself wearing it because this is a long dress. It's hard to show. Ooh. Here we go. It's got really cute gathered sleeves, gathered waistline. I haven't put in the button yet. Kind of just wear it open and I'm deciding on a button that it's supposed to close. Like that. I have a, a shirt version of this as well, but I really wanted the dress. I love it. It's so amazing. It was really easy. I highly, highly recommend this pattern if you haven't, if you're looking for a good gathered dress. I wear this with a belt because it's just, that's the most flattering way I find on my body. So I really like it. It's a cool like raglan, a sewn raglan. It's made with 
French seams, so there's no exposed edges except for the gathered skirt. And then I don't have a serger, so I just zigzag. But yeah, I really wanted a nice linen dress in a plain cream color. So I finished that. I also am currently cutting out pieces for the Hovea jacket by Megan Nielsen. Um, I'll put up pictures and this is the fabric I'm using. I've had this in my fabric stash for like two years maybe or two and a half years. My boyfriend got it for me for my birthday. I requested this fabric and I was going to make a jacket a long time ago. I just never got around to it. So I'm finally using it for the Hovea jacket. I'm doing the long version and it has a tie, like a belt tie. So I'm doing that. It will have a lining in the jacket and this is the lining. Really fun like rayon lining. I wanted something kind of slippery <laughs> for the lining and my next projects so my next project after the jacket is the joss pants by seamwork i think it's called and i got these really cool i got this really cool linen that's like denim color, so it'll be like I'm wearing jeans, but I won't feel restricted. They'll be loose flowy pants. <laughs> so I'm like really excited to make those. And then I also got this linen fabric. It's a really nice drapey, it's beige, it's like a greeny brown. And I want to make the zero waist tiered skirt, which I made before, and that's by Br Brigetta, Brigetta Helmerson. I'll put up the picture of my last, my tiered skirt that I made. So I made it before in a different linen and it wasn't as drapey, so it's kind of structured and I don't like that on me. So this one has a lot of beautiful drape and I think it'll be perfect for a tiered skirt. So I just wanted to quickly share with you my sewing plans. <laughs> I've actually been really enjoying sewing lately. I kind of go in waves of enjoying it and hating it and I'm kind of enjoying it right now. I take my time with sewing. Like I t probably <laughs> this jacket, I've been cutting out the pattern pieces for a week. That's what I do. I lay out the fabric, cut out the, the paper, place it on the fabric, step away for a day or two, go in, cut about two pieces out, step away for a day or two and I keep doing that and I that's just how I sew because it's not comfortable for me it's just that's just the most enjoyable way for me and I just yeah I don't I'm not in any rush whatsoever to have these items so I just I just do it when I want and that's the way I'm able to keep my sewing mojo and yeah I'm just trying to kind of build up my closet a little better and be more intentional with what I'm making because I recently went through my closet and I have a huge donation pile now because I just wasn't wearing a lot of things and I like certain items but I don't wear them so I'm not going to keep them and um, I'm so when I'm making my clothes now I'm just trying to think of something that is kind of classic and timeless and something that I'll have in my closet for a long time. So like that dress I just showed you, it is something that is neutral. It's not trendy, like it, it's in style, I think, but it's not like a trend that I'm gonna hate soon. And it's just something that I think I could wear for years and years and years until I, until it's like threadbare or something. So uh, yeah, and that's just kind of my, those are my thoughts on just knitting or oh god <laughs> on sewing for this year and I'm also trying to have that mindset for for knitting this year too just kind of look at pieces that I really really think will last and ones that I'll want to wear for years into the future because as I was doing my 2023 
um, video of what I made that year, there were quite a few items that I just like did not wear. I don't want to do that this year. I don't want to like pile up things and spend money on things that I'm not going to wear and spend time on things that I'm not going to wear. So yeah, those are kind of my intentions, I guess, for the year. I'm also not planning on doing a planning video for the year because I changed my mind too much. I don't really enjoy like planning. <laughs> I, okay, I used to be a wedding planner for, from like, for years. And, um, it was just like the worst time because it was a job that I wanted for a long time and I did it and I had my own business doing it. So there was a lot of pressure. There was so much stress. It was nonstop. I've never worked so much in my life and been so burnt out and it was just constant planning. And then once I finally was like, you know what, I hate this and I got out of it. I never wanted to plan anything else again. So I know some other um, podcasts out there, knitting content, it's a lot more organized and planned out. And I like watching that, I do. And I like applaud them for that, but I have a tough time doing that. I just don't enjoy it at all. It's just not how my mind works anymore. And I'm just done with planning. I don't plan anything anymore. I just kind of go with it. So that's how I'm going to go with this year too. I'm going to see what I feel like doing and go with it. And that those that's as far as my planning will go. So I'll just like keep you all up to date with my planning as, or with my making as we go. <laughs> okay. I'm tired. <laughs> I've been talking a while. So thank you all so much for checking out this video, especially if you've made it this far. I really appreciate it. I would love, love, love if you would consider liking or subscribing or commenting. It really helps out my channel in a huge way and I appreciate it so, so much. So I hopefully will be back sooner next time, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. That's my plan. And I can kind of keep you up to date on some of these things. All right, I hope you are all having a lovely day and enjoying your current projects and I'll talk to you all soon.